What we have here is a phone that's really taking a different look at the Android ecosystem, and it is very different in and of itself, inside and out. But it is a very intriguing phone, and that's why we have here your first look at the Turing phone. Now, the Turing phone, very aptly named by the company Turing Robotics, is a different take on an Android smartphone that might look a little bit more like a boutique brand like Virtu, but comes in at a more affordable price point. It also prioritizes security on the inside as well as out, which is the reason why some of the design choices on the outside are very different from what you might expect. But first, before we get into the design itself, which is really all I can show you of this phone because they didn't really have a full working camera or even software inside of these particular prototypes that they were showing me. Uh, what I can show you about the software is the kind of design language that they might be looking for. This is a demo of the software that they're using and you can see I can swipe left and right to change the different areas that I'm in and even swipe halfway in order to get to certain settings. They say that the uh, final software is going to look very different from this but at least I can show you what their design language might end up being like and I have to say it does look kind of sleek uh, and is a different take on an Android operating system. But let's take a look at the device itself. Now, uh, it definitely has the look of, let's say, a high-end sports car, and it definitely feels like one as well. Uh, the phone will remain pretty light, uh, not too light as to suggest that the materials are not sturdy, and that in and of itself is a big portion of the Turing phone's appeal, the fact that more than half of the phone on the outside and also in is made up of a material called liquid morphium. It's a very strong material that is able to withstand a lot of shock and a lot of punishment without even breaking or much less getting too many dents and scuffs, uh, at least compared to plenty of the other types of materials that we see in the Android space. They even were gracious enough to give me a small piece of liquid morphium to mess with myself, uh, and you can see here I have a hard time breaking it, much less even bending it, and the sound that it makes when it falls on the ground is a little bit telling of just how sturdy this material is. Now the entire phone is not made of liquid morphium. Actually on the back, on the top and bottom, we have polycarbonate and in the middle is a aluminum panel. Moving over to the sides, you'll see that there is a, a fingerprint reader on the side, on the left side of the phone rather, uh, and I was able to get a demonstration of what that usage looks like. Now what interested me about this was when he was trying to get into an unfinished version of Turing's own security software, uh, there was a two-factor authentication required. You first use your fingerprint and then you have to put in a code. It really goes to show you just how much Turing wants this phone to be as secure as possible, and it also has to do with the design, because you'll notice that around the entire device, there's really no headphone jack, because they want the phone to just be Bluetooth audio capable. They told me that uh, headphone jacks and using wired headphones is kind of passe. Uh, and then on the bottom, there is no micro USB charging port, or data port, I should say, because the magnetic strip that's down there is for charging and no data transfer. Data transfer will be done with Turing's own proprietary software that utilizes Wi-Fi for you to transfer data from, let's say, your computer to the phone. So really, this phone is supposed to be self-contained, where everything on the inside is just what it is, and there's nothing that will tamper it from the outside world. That also includes some protection, as the waterproof uh, phone will be able to withstand depths and also some shocks because of the liquid morphium outer body. But one interesting fact about the waterproofing is that all of the inners are coated as well. So even though there are some open areas in the design where water might seep in, it's not going to keep the phone from working. And you just have to shake off the water and you should be good to go because not only is the outside coated for the waterproofing, but every little part on the inside is as well. So we are going to get our hands on a review unit pretty soon, but the phone is going to be available for pre-order starting on July 31st. The 16 gigabyte version will go for $610, which is a pretty low price point considering that phones with with this kind of attention to detail tend to go for even more, like for example, phones by Virtu. From there, you can go from 16 gigabytes to a 64 gigabyte version that will go for $740 and a 128 gigabyte version that will go for $870. So uh, this is a look at the Turing phone, uh, mostly at the design because these particular prototypes were all that I was able to look at. A very short look at software, not even the final finished product, but you will just have to wait for my review unit to get here and I'll give you all of the details about the Turing phone at that point. So make sure you keep it tuned to Android Authority for even more about the Turing phone and keep it tuned here for even more from all of us here at Android Authority because we are your source for all things Android.